be covering that on Channel 4. But the one tip I've got for our big race for that um, 410 race comes from Gary Moore, who's a king of the all weather, and he goes for his chewit in the 410. I think at 10 to 1, if that animal, chew it or chew it, whatever it is, <laughs> if that animal, uh, I want to ask you lot, if that chew creature it? stays the trip, that wins the races and it's put it at 100 to 8, 12 to 1. What a price. And are we going to have Gigi going chew it? Chew, chew it, it, chew it, chew it. it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, no disrespect to the jumpers, but we're going to start with this most valuable race on this afternoon's card, and it is that Teletext Winter Derby. Of course, Lingfield most likened to Epsom, except, of course, today we have a Four Seasons surface to contend with. 50,000 in added prize money, 14 runners, and the market headed by David Loder's Ambig which is the only three-year-old in, uh, in the field and therefore gets stones of weight from everybody else. Steamroller Stanley, Charles Sizer's horse, is a five-to-one shot. The favourite there, four-to-one. Farmost for Sir Mark Prescott is on sevens. Running Stag, Philip Mitchell's horse, ten-to-one. That seems a, a very long price uh, given that horse's form. Brilliant Dread on elevens. <laughs> however you pronounce it. I'd have said chew it. Mac would say something different. Uh, and Diamond Flame and Refuse to Lose on 12s. 14 to 1 bar those. So Mark Prescott saddles the top weight far most and uh, no stranger to the all-weather or to winning as he showed at Wolverhampton back in December. On this, um, yes, it, it, this was the Wolfram Stakes at uh, Wolverhampton. Uh, when we turned into the straight, I really felt this is it. Um, he'll slip into another gear. But I think we do have to come back to the situation where there is such a difference between Wolverhampton and Lingfield this Surface. Is, this is your horse on the outside. He's on the outside in the orange. Yeah. And to be quite honest, um, this was at the end of quite a long old year. Um, we had sort of earmarked him to go to Hong Kong, but just felt that all the strenuous for a, for a young horse, because he's, he's a June foal, um, and he just... I think felt the exertions of a long year. Far most, I mean, what a fantastic training performance, Mark Prescott. What can you say? He does it all the time. I mean, mm. all I just fear now is all those horses that were taking him on in handicaps. I mean, I was rated 104 at that time, and he was only rated 88. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, you've got such a difference handicap wise meeting virtually at level weights. I mean, uh, it was a tough performance that too. And Far most, after he'd gone about 50 yards, George gave him a real smack to get him up in the front so that he could sort of feel like he must back dominate. That, that that's his style. Uncle of George, the greatest jockey in the Post Warrior not on today. I mean, no disrespect to Seb Sand is excellent, but he stood George down. in the sunshine. <laughs> he stood, he stood down. Stood down. Right, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> Very sad. Let's just go back to the question of the surface, because obviously some people at home may not realise, I mean, all weather to them might be all weather. There is, in fact, a difference between the three all weather courses here. Now, it's been a bit confusing this winter because Lingfield changed slightly. We had a while when it was actually saying standard but slow. Just explain to us what the well, difference is. I think, is I think the them. reason that um, Lingfield went um, to slow is because they were fed up with everyone was fed up with seeing it standard, and they were kept saying, "Well, you know, the times are not as fast as they were three or four years ago." So they just changed the changed the ground to, to slow. All they've actually done is just harrowed the track a little deeper um, and gone through what is a pad. There's a, there's a cushion pad there, and they've just disturbed that a little bit, and that's what's made some of the races slow, and that's what's made a little bit more of the kickback. There is a, a vast difference, really, between. Wolverhampton and, and, and Lingfield, there really is, uh, and horses that, um, that, that really take to Wolverhampton sometimes don't mm. handle Lingfield. Well, you, we were saying before we came on that you have a horse that ran at uh, Wolverhampton recently, Amador, yeah. who just did just not go just, in it. No, couldn't go in he's he a won, here. Yeah, he, he won earlier in the month, at, um, he won in early February here. Um, and then uh, went to Wolverhampton for the 12,000 handicap and just got completely lost. Yeah. Mm. Now, I, I hear that they've been sprinkling a bit of water on this surface this morning and that it sure. might ride a bit quicker than it has been recently. Right. Um, so that'll be interesting. So maybe the faster ground horses will come into their own. I think that that will help because all it will do is actually lay, the, lay as much kickback as possible. Mm. It, this track always rides better when it's had just a little bit of rain on it. When it's been riding slow, <coughs> the kickbacks look it's horrendous. Yeah, horrendous. Yeah, it is horrendous. Horrendous. Yeah. Mm. horrendous. There are obviously you know, a lot of horses in this race that have got lots of all-weather experience, um, whether it's at Wolverhampton or here or wherever. One of those, Fayek, won only last Saturday. That was at Wolverhampton and it was in the Lincoln Trial Handicap. Yeah, this horse is a revelation. Tony Newcomb's done incredibly well with him. He's on the outside, the horse with the white face, black and orange jacket, coming home very fast, going the long way round. But uh, 
He's uh, notching up his fourth win on the trot here at Wolverhampton. We've got no more Mr. Nice Guy. Rambo Walzer in the centre running on well. Refused to lose, who runs again on the right-hand side. Horse with a white face. And is better off at the weights today. But Faik really serves it up to them on the outside inside the final 50. To win narrowly, but uh, fairly decisively. And uh, he's just continuing to progress. But this is another step up today. And uh, it's on a different surface. Will he stay? Will he get the extra? That's I mean, a big question, he's by Arazi. There's two in here, in fact, by Arazi. Talk mm. about a well-bred field. For me, I, I would have my doubts. Big but... question mark because I think this will be a strongly run race yeah. today. We were just mentioning the um, the kickback and Brilliant Red, one of the runners, uh, obviously, in fancied runners today. On this VT, you really do see what it what this kickback's like. Yes, you can see here, particularly as they come off the bend, what the horses are running into, and it, it really is. A very stiff and tall order sometimes. The kickback really does fly off here. Brilliant Red does this really well. And um, he's got a good attitude to the game. He's a horse who was beaten um, in a, just two necks in a big handicap, 28 run and one towards the back end by consort. He's got the right attitude. And uh, I, I think he probably got a decent chance today. Trip again, the worry. I mean, this race is full of horses who are stepping up and trip. And I've never thought I'd say it. this is a tremendous race for all weather. Absolutely. I mean, sorry, four seasons race. And it's a flat race, yeah. Alistair. And You're feeling well. The flat race. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the end of the right now. Very good. Uh, it's a flat race, and it's on the sand. <laughs> the world and it's Cheltenham. Oh, okay. And it's Cheltenham. It really isn't a bad heat. No, As it shouldn't yeah. be for 35 grand. Well, one horse that there'll be no question marks in terms of whether he stays is Steamroller Stanley, which I have to admit is, is my fancy, not just because I think Charles Size is one of the nicest men in the world, but because uh, this horse is a three course and distance wins, which has to be a good pointer. Yes, he's a really solid uh, all-weather performer, this fellow. Uh, loves Lingfield. Here he is, yellow colours, white plains on his outside. Back in third, a horse called Graumano, who looked a pretty decent tall a couple of months ago. And um, I think this was a, a, a pretty good performance by Steamroller Stanley. White plains has won a few races around here. And what this horse tends to do, the best way to ride him is to be in front three or four furlongs out and basically grind, the, grind it out. And as you see, he gets the trip very well. He's got a peculiar way of carrying his tail straight out behind him, which would normally suggest maybe a slight problem or maybe an attitude problem but he hasn't got an attitude problem that's for sure I think he's he's a pretty good tool around here and I think he's the one they've all got to beat today. and he's the unique horse in training isn't he because he's the Barry's Bismarck that didn't sink yeah. Barry oh. Dennis's nine Bismarcks only one actually won and he couldn't and, get that and, beat. and he couldn't get that beat and note that Barry Dennis has been but in Barbados ever since the Bismarck <laughs> he's, got, he's got eight short price horses beaten he's disappeared the Caribbean he won't be back he's a long didn't time sail yeah, <laughs> actually, actually, there was a great picture on the BBC News of the cricket. They, they go into the spectators' occasion, and there was Barry, bare belly, flopping out, swinging it all back and all that sort of thing. But I have to ask you one thing as a team, and I'll ask you, Philip, especially ambiguous, a three-year-old. When I used to do private handicapping in the 60s and the 70s, we would never, ever have a three-year-old, don't care what weight they received, against the older horses in March, April and May. And never, and I cannot believe it possible, unless the all-weather turns things totally around, that a three-year-old, David Loder, genius as he may or may not be, can he possibly beat the older horses? 19 pounds, but I don't think it's enough. And again, will he stay? Well, this is, this is obviously the, the question mark. I mean, this is the key to it. He's won two, he won a seven, very, very, in my, well, my humble opinion, a very ordinary mm -hmm. maiden at uh, Wolverhampton. And uh, I think the handicapper was um, extremely guilty of rule 151, in my opinion, in only rating this horse at, at 60. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, the horse actually won 10 lengths. Regardless of what he'd done last year, it had been harked around that the horse was all wrong last year. Um, he's now on a rating of 85 after his last, uh, uh, last victory there. So they put him up 25 pounds. But would that. you have a three-year-old at this time of the year against older horses on all weather or even on the turf? In well, the, the, district, the, the trouble is this all weather seems to be a, a law unto itself. But if this was, and uh, you're quite right, under normal terms, three-year-olds would not take old horses on till July. Yeah. But you, you get occasionally a two-year-old will run against older horses. Yeah, back end of the year. Oh. Back end of the year. Well, oh, yeah, well, that's in fine. The numfth, yeah, in well, the that's numthor, fine. In the numthor, the numthor they can do it. it. <laughs> Horses like Ennis won the numthor, yes. didn't they? They can do it, yeah. But it's just always, it's, it was always rule of thumb that three-year-olds would not dabble with, with the older horses yes. until about June, July time. I'm glad you're nearly as old as I am. I'm glad <laughs> about that. <laughs> no. Well, of course, Ambiguous uh, was the favourite. Let's have another look at... He was there at four to one, but uh, see what else was on offer for some of those others.
Steamroller Stanley there, five to one. Some longer prices on offer further down, including our uh, newly pronounced Chew It. Chew it. <laughs> and of course, won his only start this season and his penultimate race at Wolverhampton in December. Yes, Chew It does this well. Comes from off the pace at Wolverhampton. And uh, the trip is going to be the problem.